Hello, everybody. Next up, we play host to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Kickoff on Saturday is 5:30 p.m. for the benefit of Sky. The early evening start may just be useful for once, as Saturday is one of those days on which there's a rail strike. C2C will be running some form of limited service, whilst Greater Anglia is suggesting they'll be running virtually nothing. As if we could tell the difference. Check before you leave, and leave early, I'd say. So, Wolves then. Currently, they sit in one place and two points above us, with six points from the seven they've played so far. They've won just the one game, which was 1-0 at home to Southampton. They've drawn three, 0-0 at both home to Fulham and away at Bournemouth, and one all at Newcastle. And they've lost three, 2-1 at Leeds, 1-0 at Spurs, and 3-0 at home to Man City. So not particularly inspiring, but slightly better than us then. Boss Bruno Lager brought in five first-teamers to keep Daisy busy this weekend, although she refused to comment much on the signing of South Korean striker Hwang Hee Chan and his move from fizzy drink Salzburg. This was on the grounds that he was there all along last season, and simply activating a clause in an existing loan deal wasn't a proper transfer worthy of her undoubted investigative skills. Frankly, I was too scared to argue with her. One new signing we definitely won't be seeing this weekend is Irish defender Nathan Collins. Collins was imported from the ashes of relegated Burnley for £20.5 million, which, Daisy informs me, is a record for an Irishman. Collins starts a three-match ban this weekend. Now, whilst generally new medical techniques are sort of welcomed, Collins' experiment in trying to give Grealish an anaesthetic-free vasectomy the other week did not find favour with the referee, whose straight red card was fully merited. No Wolves transfer window would be complete, of course, without a Portuguese arrival, and this summer was no exception. £27.5 million was the fee paid to Valencia for Gonzalo Guedes. Guedes came through the Benfica youth system before breaking through to the first team in around 2014. In January 2017, he made a €30 million Euro switch to PSG, but after only eight appearances in the eight months or so that followed, it was clear that he wasn't exactly first choice over there. So in September of that year, he headed off back south to Valencia, an initial loan spell being made permanent at the start of 2018-19. PSG weren't that unhappy. The €40 million Euro fee was a nice return on a player who was with them for such a short time. Indeed, unspecified add-ons could have added another €17 million Euros to that deal. Guedes functions primarily on the left-hand side. Another Portuguese international arrived in the form of Brazilian-born Mateus Nunes. Nunes came in from Sporting for a club million €45 million, Euros, which at the time was roughly £38 million, but could easily be double that by now. Every time I look up the exchange rate, the display whirs around like the far right of the clock, in a 100 metre sprint, so Lord knows how much he's worth at the moment in sterling. In sterling, £15 million was the fee paid to Vierby Stuttgart for Austrian striker Sacha Kaladzic. Unfortunately for the player, he managed to prove that it's not just us who sign players who get injured shortly after arrival. His debut came in the 1-0 win over Southampton, but he lasted only until the interval. It's subsequently being discovered that he'd sustained an anterior cruciate ligament tear. Although he's had surgery, it's likely to keep him out for the rest of the season. Kaladzic's misfortune left them short of numbers up front, prompting the signing of Diego Costa, who was available as a free agent. He'll be remembered for scoring a late and rather undeserved winner against us one year, after being allowed to stay on the pitch after an X-rated challenge on Adrian. The challenge was worthy of an instant red card, but since the player played for Chelsea, he was spared even the second yellow that would have seen him sent off. This happened in the heady days before we got two idiots for the price of one ruining games, with the introduction of VAR, and it will be interesting to see whether referees both on pitch and off will start to pick up on some of his more unsavoury moves now he doesn't play for one of the so-called Big Five or Tottenham. Costa signed too late to be involved in the Man City defeat, but with Chiquinho and Jimenez both also unavailable through injury, one would expect him to have feature at some stage in this match. So let's move on to an international version of the wild and wacky world of association football. And England were finally relegated from the top tier of the Nations League. 
The relegation itself was met with mass indifference, unlike the nature of the performances involved, which caused a lot of disquiet, with a lot of ire aimed at players called Harry. One of these did his usual trick of giving the ball away pretty much every time he touched it. The other avoided such issues by only playing the ball when it was placed on that nice round spot for him 12 yards out. I guess the last half hour of the Germany game was, I suppose, entertaining in a somewhat perverse way, watching two teams try to outdo each other in the just-how-poor-can-we-play stakes. Doesn't really bode well for Qatar, particularly since, as indicated by his late presence in the Germany game, Henderson is still considered by Southgate to be good enough to be part of an international squad. I guess he might have a point if that squad had two fewer lions on its shirts, I suppose. Talking of shirts, am I the only one who longs to see a plain white England shirt, unsullied by splashes of other colours or gimmicks? Even as I'm writing this, my attention has just been drawn to the Danish kit for Qatar, which, due to the kit manufacturer's desire to disassociate itself with the host nation's, shall we say, less than enlightened attitude to human rights, carries minimal branding, and as a result it's all the better for it. Let's move on to us, shall we? Everton was a complete and utter shambles right from the start, when, during the minute silence, the Scousers proved that they can be obnoxious, irrespective of the colour of the shirt they support. I found our approach during the game reminiscent at times of the bad old days of Allardyce, when avoiding defeat was the main priority. It's been a while since I saw a sober reft of attacking intent until we went 1-0 down. Too many players at the moment are operating at subpar levels, into which mix we've had to throw new players who haven't been able to get up to the pace of the Premier League. It's a recipe for disaster. The international break was a bit of a two-edged sword, really. I guess it provided players with a welcome break from the daily grind, but with so many players away on representative duty, time would be limited to work on that which needs sorting out. At the time of writing, as players make their way back from the international scene, we have but just two on the injury list. Auger is much is progressing much as expected, though it'll probably be after the World Cup before he's available. Johnson's hamstring is healing up, but again I'd expect another two weeks would be prudent in his case. I guess we'd better move on to the prediction. Well, two sides with few goals between them. I'm guessing it's probably got nil-nil stamped all over it. However, I reckon that if Mr Moyes had a chance to sit any of the squad down over a DVD of that last performance, there ought to be enough of a reaction to, well, spark a reaction on Saturday. It's probably not going to be pretty, but at the moment I still haven't had the last of my optimism drained from me, even though the nights are drawing in and the TV schedules are full of offerings for the hard of thinking. Another advantage of the 5.30 kickoff will be avoiding of having to put up with Daisy watching loads of people she hasn't heard of in Strictly Come Bloody Dancing, which is the biggest argument for scrapping the licence fee ever. However, we don't start picking up points soon, my usual equitable and glass half full demeanour may well start to unravel. But for the time being, I'm going to go for a home win. So the £2.50 that was going to go on buying a euro, or half a euro, or depending on how long it takes to read this, that'll be going on us to pick up points in a nervy 2-1 win. If you could sort that out for me, please, Mr Winston. Enjoy the game. So we're here in the offices of a late late show with the host of a late late show, James Corden. Hi. Big West Ham fan. Yes. <laughs> and big knees up Mother Brown man. Yeah. Get on the forum at KUMB.com. Come on you irons.